what a moment for Eli Apple and for his mom, Annie, who's been with him every step of the way and who has become a bit of a Twitter sensation in these last few days. What's it like for you to watch that video of your little boy being drafted by the New York Giants? I'm telling you, it's, Lindsay, it's still so surreal. Like, it's unbelievable. It's just, and it's only been a week, so today is, so today is technically the week anniversary. Um, but it's, it's amazing. It's amazing to watch your kid from a small child work towards something and then actually have the privilege and honor to see him walk out that dream. So we were all really, really excited. Look how handsome he looks. <laughs> but Look he doesn't have him. a watch on. You know, but he knows what time it is, though. You don't always need a watch to know what time it is. <laughs> That's why God created cell phones. I got to ask you about the watch because you wrote a piece in uh, SI since you brought up his outfit. We'll go there now uh, okay. where you said that uh, he wanted to wear a Rolex, essentially. And you said, no, you're not wearing to wear a Rolex. Your quote was, dude, you're an unemployed college dropout. You will not be on TV with a Rolex. I love this. How'd that conversation go down? Well, you know what? He didn't really want it. I think people were offering him, hey, you can borrow one just to wear on camera and the whole nine. So I was like, uh, no, dude, you are not going to be on anybody's TV with a Rolex on, you know, dropping out of college and with no job. Um, so we kind of came up, you know, to a great, you know, resolution. And I had my cell phone. He had his cell phone. And I bought him a charger so he knew, you know, what time it was. So you've got a lot of say in what goes on with this guy. No, it's not so much say. I think because I just always try to keep him grounded in as far as who he is. And he's not a Rolex kind of guy. I mean, I'm not trying to Rolex shame anyone. If you have it and you love it and you're happy with it, that's great. But when you don't have a job, I don't think you should be walking around with a Rolex. He did go pretty early in the draft, obviously 10th overall, but you still had to sit in that green room and wait for his name to be called for a while. What's that like while you sit there watching your son essentially wait for the phone to ring? It was totally like a cocktail party at The Bachelor. I mean, you're sitting there like, okay, is it going to be me? Is it going to be me? Um, I mean, but I was pretty cool. Eli and I had a bet. He thought that I would cry, so we had a bet that if I didn't cry, and I really didn't cry because I was excited. I was so excited for him for this moment. But I think we were all pleasantly shocked when the Giants picked him. It was just it's beyond a dream come true. So we were very excited. Did anyone cry? Um, I think my husband had tears in his eyes. His youth football coach, let's just say all the men at our table cried. Now that you have had a few days to process all of this, I have a very important question for you. Are you done rooting for the Cowboys? Uh, who are they? No, I really... That I'm quickly, really huh? Done. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You have to be quick, Lindsay. You can't be slow. You got to stay woke and you have to be quick. You know, uh, I mean, they're a great organization, but I'm telling you, I guess no better than the New York Giants. Absolutely no better. Speaking of the Cowboys, you got to meet Michael Irvin at the draft? I don't think so. I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Do, do, do not play that. <laughs> because, of course, we're talking about your red carpet interview with him. You are a self-professed Cowboys fan. And yeah. what did you call Michael Irvin? You know what? I think in, in, inherently we're all running backs. You know what I mean? We all run back. So I think we're all inherently hunt. You know what? It's so funny. I had mommy brain. You know, sometimes like you, you say one thing, but you're thinking another. And I was, and Eli stood there and let me take an L. He was like, you know, mom, every now and then you just got to take your L. Um, so, and it's so funny. We are in the green room and Dion walks by. Eli was like, hey, mom, there goes Dion Sanders. He was a kicker. So he's been clowning me every day since that day. But Michael Irvin knows he's a wide receiver. He should have stood up for himself. Okay. That's his fault. We know you were embarrassed about that. And we also <laughs> know you know football. So we want to give you a chance to redeem yourself here. We're going to show you a couple of football players, and you tell okay. me what position they play. You're going to nail okay. this. I know it. All right. Okay, first up. Yeah. Who's that? What, well, what position does that guy play? That is, that is Jason Witten, and he is a tight end. Do I get a brownie for everything I Boom. get right? Speaking of brownies, we'll get to that. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, there, there might be a treat coming your way. Uh, next position here. This was Eli's favorite player growing up. That is LaDania. And you know what? Eli, always remember my birthday because LaDania's birthday is the day before mine. Um, so, yeah, he is the, he is a running back. He is a running back. Boom. <laughs> ding. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, how about Two this brownies. next guy? From your, okay. new, your new favorite team, what position does he play? 
Oh, that is the other Eli. I guess they're going to be calling him White Eli and Black Eli's, but that's White Eli. <laughs> okay, and, he, and he's a quarterback. And finally, here's here's the bonus question. There he is. Uh -oh. <sighs> right, you're wrong. That is, that is, you know what, Michael Irvin, that is you. You are a Hall of Famer, and you are a wide receiver. Wide <laughs> receiver. Okay, there you go. Now, and you ask for it. And you get it here. We heard that you were unhappy about the lack of dessert options at the draft. Uh, no, there the were no options, Lindsay. There were no, there were none. I, I was, you know, trying to make the NFL look a little bit better there <laughs> by saying lack of. Um, okay, you said that the commissioner owed you a treat. So, what what was just handed to you right there? Oh, oh. Did, what? It's um, it's a cookie. It's not a brownie, but it is it's in the chocolate family. Look, it was short notice. I mean, you know, you know I mean, we were you... planning this interview for a week. Um, Lindsay, you guys should have gotten me a brownie. Not only did the commissioner not get me a brownie, NFL Network did not get me a brownie. Now I'm suing for two brownies. Well, I was pretending like that was from <laughs> Roger Goodell, so I, I don't know that I want to take this one for the team. All right, fine. We'll get you a brownie next time, Annie. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me.